Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a book review, but it's actually not going to be a super, super new book, um, and I'll explain why as I get through it. But today I'm going to be talking about um, The Chestnut Man by Soren Sveistrup. I have no idea if I said that right, but we're going to go with Soren Sveistrup. Um, so the reason I want to talk about this is because even though it was written in 2018, it wasn't translated into English until 2019, and I believe the paperback didn't come out until 2020, but it is going to be turned into a Netflix show. And I think um, it's important to talk about more international books, especially as they are starting to come to the US and are about to have a lot of buzz surrounding them. Um, so I found this book on a suggestion table in one of my favorite bookstores in DC, Politics and Prose. I knew absolutely nothing about it, but I've been really, really into like um, European translated books recently. So I read Hex and Let the Right One In last year. I just picked up this guy. And I think it's really, really cool to see um, one, a translated book, and two, something that gives you a little bit of an insight into a different culture. So this book is set in Copenhagen and uh, Soren Sveistrup is Danish. And this, is, I believe, is his first, like, um, uh, crime thriller novel. I know he has worked on um, a series of books called The Killing, which I believe is also being turned into a TV show, but I don't know too, too much about that. Uh, but yeah, so I kind of picked this book up blindly and just kind of jumped right in. And I'm going to say right off the bat that this book blew me away. I read it in, like three and a half days. It's just over 500 pages long um, and it is just absolutely fabulous. Um, so yeah, so this was a five-star read for me. It is a detective thriller mis murder mystery kind of thing. Um, very, very, very akin to like SVU but like on steroids. Like it is just jam-packed with a lot of stuff. So I'm going to read the back really quickly because this is all that I knew going into it. So it says, A psychopath is terrorizing Copenhagen. His calling card is a chestnut man, a handmade doll composed of matchsticks and two chestnuts, which he leaves at each bloody crime scene. Examining the dolls, forensics makes a shocking discovery. A fingerprint belonging to a young girl, a government minister's daughter who had been kidnapped and murdered a year ago. A tragic coincidence or something more twisted? To save innocent lives, a pair of detectives must put aside their differences to piece together the chestnut man's gruesome clues, because it's clear that the madman is on a mission that is far from over and no one is safe. Um, so that was the premise. That's all that I knew about it. I will say that <laughs> it goes far more deep into the story than that. Um, but yes, that is the general premise. So I'm going to quickly talk about the things that like really, really, really worked with this book. Um, this book has one of the strongest opening scenes I read recently. I'm very um, picky with my opening scenes because I feel like that is the part of the book that really needs to grip you. And this opening scene was so intense, so fast paced. Um, even though it features only minor characters, it was extremely well developed um, and just instantly drew me into the story. I absolutely loved um, the opening scene. It reminded me a lot of um, the first season of the Hannibal TV series, if you have seen that. Um, and just very strange, you're not really sure what's going on, but you're very invested in these characters um, after only one brief chapter. So that to me spoke volumes on um, Spice Drop's writing style as well as where the story was gonna lead me. Um, and again, it's very, very fast paced. There was never a boring moment in this book. It never seemed to slog. Um, it just kind of pulled you in and presented what its story was and then pushed the plot forward. Another thing I really loved were our two main characters. So our two main characters are two detectives named Thulin and Hess. They are very much um, akin, respectively, to Olivia Benson and Elliot Stabler from SVU, in my opinion, which is one of my favorite shows and probably why I gravitated towards this novel so, so much. Um, they are given a lot of background information, a lot of well-developed characterization. Um, you really believe them, but their stories are revealed over the course of the book in a very natural way, so you don't feel like you have 
everything about them kind of shoved down your throat within the first few pages of the book. And that I think is the best way to develop character, to show little snippets of them um, and then fully round it out as the story evolves and develops. And I thought that was beautifully done in this novel. Um, the, in a almost in like a Riley Sager style, this book is filled with like twists and turns and a lot of misdirection. Unlike Riley Sager, where those twists sometimes seem to come out of left field, um, you kind of a sense a twist is coming, but once the reveal happens, you don't um, feel cheated. Like once the reveals happen, you're like, oh, they were building up to that the whole time and I just completely missed it. Like everything really falls together like a jigsaw puzzle um, and you don't really feel like you're being misled for the shock value of the book. It all really does build up on top of each twist to make the final reveal make so much more sense, which I think is not only very difficult for an author to do and pull off in a believable way, but it's just a very hard thing to get your reader invested in when you've already been misled so many times. Um, well, the reason I think this works is because you were watching the story through the detective's eyes for the most part, so you're getting the same viewpoint as those detectives. Um, and again, all of these twists make very, very logical sense from a detective standpoint and from the standpoint of the person or people pulling off these twists. Um, so it, it is all very calculated, which I really, really, really liked. Which leads me to, to the big, of course, like final reveal of like who the chestnut man is and all of that. Um, stuff which I won't really get into I don't want to put any spoilers in here but I will say the ending is unbelievably satisfying um, I did not see the twist coming I did not see I, I thought I knew what was going on I thought I had a grip I thought I was gonna be able to figure the mystery out I did not um, and then when you look back on it you're like oh yeah almost like the usual suspects right when you look back on it you're like wow I can see everything and how all of this led up to here and Spice Drop was so good at leading me to think it was something else and be so invested in it being something else that when this reveal came it caught me off guard um, but not in a way that has made me um, feel like it was shock value just for shock value like it, it fully made sense why that happened this way. Um, and again, all of the characters in this book are so well developed, even the minor characters, as I was saying before, like it's very rare that you see a book, almost like Stephen King wrote it, that really gives you insight and tangibility to minor characters that are only there for a few chapters or so, but just the way it is written, you get a full characterization of these characters so you know the type of personality they are and you know why they act certain ways and they aren't just there to drive the plot forward, they just add layers and layers to this mystery, to this plot, to how the case is handled, and I thought that was brilliant. And I mean anybody from like minor criminals to witnesses to like low-level police officers that just show up, like every single person gets their moment to shine and explain why that type of personality is what pushes the plot forward instead of just using a character as a plot device. And again, it is extremely readable. Um, this book does bank heavily on the use of um, like forensics and detective like deduction and a lot of like police procedure. And yet it is extremely readable. It is extremely digestible. Um, nothing ever felt like it was over my head or like I was drowning in information. Even when they start talking about things like, um, uh, like the Mindhunter style behavioral unit kind of dissection. I still felt like I really, really grasped a lot of it. Um, even though this is a five-star read for me, this book isn't perfect. It's, it's very hard to write a perfect book, I would say. There are, of course, flaws. Um, none to me that made this book any less enjoyable, though. Um, so basically flaws that I was like fine overlooking. Um, the biggest one for me being like the typical thing that you get when you read a thriller like this is like, would this really happen in real life? And the first thing that I think is like, no. It's written in a very believable way. <laughs> I've talked about Chuck Palahniuk on this channel before, um, but Chuck Palahniuk has a really interesting style of writing where he can write things that are so absurdist and bizarre, but he writes it in a way where you don't question that that would happen. 
until afterwards when you're looking back and you kind of get that feeling with the chestnut man um of course spice strep's writing is very very different than palinux writing but he, he is able to really engross you into this world of like in this world yes this is what happened and this is why this is how it would happen and you kind of get over the fact that in real life yeah that it's probably unlikely but you at that point just don't care and then another thing um and i don't really want to get too deep into it without like ruining the story so this could be like a minor spoiler but there are a lot of things where like i just don't believe cops would ignore certain evidence the way that they do in this story um i don't think that they would ignore talking to certain witnesses or people who may have been involved in the story because it's connected to other cases like they're very very adamant that like no there's no way these things are connected we're not gonna push forth on that because that case has already been solved like that seems to be a big trend throughout the story that i feel like at least like in like america i feel like whenever you watch detective shows like they're always trying to grasp for any possible connection no matter how absurd and in this one it's like this isn't an absurd connection but they're like yeah, I don't think it's real, so we're just gonna ignore it. And that to me really was like the big thing that kind of took me out of place with the story because I was like, I don't think I believe any of that. Um, it did work very well to drive the story and it, that kind of attitude did work very well to drive certain characters' um, personalities and characterization. So I understand why it's in there, but to me, I felt like it could have been handled just a little bit better because I just thought it was a little forced. Um, that's pretty much the only part of the whole story that I thought was Forced. Again, I really like a lot of the detective tactics that were used in this book. They felt very, very real. Um, I love the idea of like interviewing serial killers to try and figure out how other serial killers operate. I love the idea of forensic science and how forensics can tell you so much about like the evidence at hand and how that was used to try and crack the case of what was happening. I thought that was done very, very, very well. Um, I love the idea of putting two um, harsh personalities together to be partners. Uh, the whole idea of like opposites attract, that is a theme and a trend throughout this um, story. There isn't just like one set of detectives who don't make sense as partners. It is kind of a thing throughout. I thought that was really, really cool and very believable and again, very realistic. And as I was saying, it is extremely well written, but it is very, very blunt. Um, and I'm not sure if this is how Spicestrup writes, or if it's more of like a Danish thing, or if it's just how the um, the English translation captured it. But a lot there's there's very like I don't even know what the right word would be. Um, everybody's very blunt um, in what they're saying. There's not a lot of like kind of hiding or implying like what you're thinking or feeling or what you think you should do. Everybody's just very like, this is what's happening. This is what we're doing. And it translates also into the actual writing of the novel. Like there's a lot of showing versus telling in this novel, but there is also quite a lot of like telling. Um, just very like straightforward, this happened, he did this kind of thing. Um, to the point where like sometimes people are speaking and I wasn't actually sure who was speaking because the conversation was just this kind of like series of interjections. Um, that kind of flowed after like I guess what were supposed to be internal monologues that I, I initially read as like the author just telling me what was happening that somehow became the thoughts of certain characters that then translated into like spoken responses. Um, so it did get a little confusing there and of course that could have just been the fact that it was again translated um, to another language uh, but uh, it didn't bother me too 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 much. Um, but yeah, no, I, I cannot recommend this novel enough. It really, really blew me away. It was fun, fast paced. It was super unique. It is a very solid crime drama. I know I do a lot of horror on this channel. Um, this isn't technically a horror, but it is very disturbing and creepy in certain areas and aspects. Um, not as creepy as like maybe Silence of the Lambs or Red Dragon, but definitely in that vein of like that type of thriller. Um, I found this really fun, um, like I've said like a million times now, and I'm so, so happy with this. I really wanna look into more of Spice Drop's work. There's not that much out there, unfortunately. He works primarily in television, um, 
but I will be watching this show now that I've seen this. So I just wanted to talk about this because again, it will be a show. I do highly recommend reading it before you watch the show. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually hoping to do a little spotlight eventually on like um, translated works that I've read recently because I think they're really cool. I like the, the glimpse into other cultures um, and into like other societies and how they handle certain things and I just think it would be really fun and really cool so hopefully I will get to that soon. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I do post every Monday and Thursday. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you have any good suggestions for thriller or horror novels um, that have been translated into different languages, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear more about them. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.